stress as a bodily response. Stress is the subjective, subjective experience of the lack of fit between a person and their environment. Effects of stress. Physiological. Increased pupil size allows more light in for better vision. Bronchial tubes in lungs dilate for great oxygen intake. Increase in heart rate allows for greater blood flow to skeletal muscles. Sweat glands stimulated. Glycogen stored in liver is converted to glucose for energy. And the adrenal medulla is stimulated to release adrenaline. What's all that about then? Why, why does the body do all of that when it gets stressed? Anybody? Fight or flight response. You're ready to tussle or get the hell out of touch. Sorry, go on. The psychological effects of stress. Anxiety and depression. Types of stress. Oh, I like the types of things. Acute, sudden stresses such as a personal attack and chronic ongoing stresses such as the stress of a job. Like the situation. <laughs> <laughs> Acute so stress, the sympathetic medullary pathway. Acute stresses arouse the auton autonomic nervous system or the ANS. This system is necessary because some bodily functions, for example your heartbeat, would not work as well if you had to think about them. The ANS is divided into the sympathetic nervous system or the SNS which um, this um, an arouses an animal to be ready for a fight, flight or fight situation and the parasympathetic branch which returns the animal back to a state of relaxation. When an animal is exposed to an acute stressor, the SNS is activated. This prepares the animal for the fight-flight response. The sympathetic adrenal jewelry system, or SAM, has a key part of making a fight-flight response. The SNS and SAM system together make up the sympathetic Sympathomedullary pathway. That's the That's SNS. Cool. Neurons from the SNS travel to nearly every organ and gland within the body. This prepares the body for a rapid action when the animal is under threat. Such responses include a, ri include a rise in heart rate, blood pressure, increased pupil size, and metabolic changes. Noradrenaline, aka norepinephrine, is the neurotransmitter released by the SNS to activate these internal body organs. Is that, is that the, the guilty party there? Is that noradrenaline? Yes. Okay. The SAM system. At the same time the SNS is activated, the SAM system alerts the animal through the release of adrenaline, aka epinephrine, into the bloodstream. The adrenaline in the bloodstream is transported throughout the body to prepare the animal for flight or fight. The SAM system is regulated by the SNS and also the adrenal medulla. The adrenal medulla. Each adrenal gland has two distinct sections, the adrenal medulla in the centre of the gland and the adrenal cortex around the outside. Neurons of the SNS travel to the medulla so that when it's activated it releases adrenaline into the bloodstream. Once in the blood, the adrenaline has widespread effects on the body, body's physiological systems. These include boosting the supply of oxygen to glu and glucose to the brain and the muscles, suppressing non-emergency processes like digestion. Chronic stress. The pituitary adrenal system. The pituitary adrenal system is also known as the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, or HPA. This has been seen as the body's stress system controlling levels of cortisol and other important stress-related hormones. Although both physical and emotional stresses activate the HPA, compared to the SAM system, activation of the HPA is much less easy to achieve. This occurs in response to chronic stress situations. The role of the hypothalamus.
When stress is perceived by the higher centres of the brain, an impulse passes to a small cone-shaped part of the brain, the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is the control system of the body's hormonal systems. These include those involved in the stress response. Activation of a particular region of the hypothalamus, the paraventricular nucleus, or the PVN, leads to the production of corticotrophin releasing factor, or CRF. This is released into the bloodstream in response to the stressor. The pituitary gland. On the arrival of the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland, CRF causes the pituitary release and produce adrenocorticotrophic hormone or ACTH. From the pituitary, ACTH is transported in the bloodstream to its target site in the adrenal glands located at the top of the kidneys. The adrenal cortex. Cortisol released by the adrenal cortex is responsible for several stress-related effects in the body. Some of these are positive, for example, a quick burst of energy and lower sensitivity to pain whereas others are negative, for example, impaired co cognitive performance, higher blood pressure and lowered immune response. You can probably relate some of that to that, yeah, those dogs that you took as well, about over yeah. an hour or hours of reducing it, and then your blood pressure juice again. Prolonged release of ACTH causes the adrenal cortex to increase in size in order to cope with increased cortisol production. Long-term ACTH deficiency causes it to shrink. Feedback. The feedback process takes around 20 minutes to be completed, with cortisol levels typically rising quickly 20 minutes after the initial perception of an acute stressor. This system is also very efficient at regulating itself. Both the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland have special receptors that monitor circulating cortisol levels. If these rise above normal le levels, they initiate a reduction of CR in CRF and ACTH levels, with then bring cortisol levels back to normal. And that is stress. Thank you very much. Round of applause, Derek.